Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to make yourself look like a cyborg using Photopia. And you'll see in Photopia I have already opened up this photograph of myself. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the background. So I'm going to go to the magic wand tool and just click on the background. And because it's the same color, it selects all of it. And I can press delete and that gets rid of the background for me. I'm going to press control D to get rid of the um, mask and make a new layer and move that layer down to underneath the photo layer. And I'm gonna make sure I've got black selected, go to the paint bucket tool and just paint bucket in the whole of that bottom layer so it's black, okay? Then back to the photo layer, I'm gonna go image adjustments, hue saturation, and I just want to bring up the saturation, make my um, picture look a little bit more colorful, click okay. And then image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and I'm just going to mess around with these just to make um, my image a little bit more dramatic, a bit more contrast, bring down the uh, lightness a little bit. Um, looking good. So it's a little bit more in keeping with the black background, I guess. Okay, right. Next, I just want to get rid of a few little bits on that layer that are making the background not so nice. So I just get rid of those, delete those. Just little bits left over from the magic wand tool. So I'm just using the eraser tool just to rub those out. Okay, now I want to start making myself look like a cyborg. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut a panel out from the side of my cheek. And this can be any shape you like, but it's just about using the polygonal mask tool just to click on points and then back to the start. And then I'm gonna press Control C to copy it. Okay, it's really important that, okay, so I've got my whole mask there. I'm gonna press Control C and that's copied it. It hasn't actually done anything, but it's copied it. Now I'm gonna make a new layer. And while that mask is still there, I'm just gonna paint bucket in that mask in black. So on that new layer, I've got it in black. And then I'm gonna press Control V and that's gonna paste in that same shape again onto its own layer. So I essentially have three layers, the photo layer, a black shape layer, and the layer with my copied bit of cheek on. Okay, right, now I'm going to my black layer and I'm right clicking and duplicating it by pressing duplicate layer. And I'm gonna recolor that layer to something like dark skin color for now. I'm gonna change it up, but for now I've just got that color and I'm going to paint bucket that to fill it in. And now I'm gonna move that to just below the cheek layer, um, but just offsetting it. And the idea is that this layer is gonna make it look like the bit of cheek that I've got there is has, has a thickness to it, okay? So I'm going to go back to that layer and I'm just going to move it around to, so I've got it just offset just diagonally offset from the uh, skin below it. Okay. So I'm just nudging that about. So I've got it exactly where I want it. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm just going to mess around with the hue saturation and lightness. So I get it so it's lighter than the skin below it. Okay, so this is making it look like that panel of my cheek has a thickness to it. Okay, and once I've done that, if I zoom in, you can see I've got these kind of corners that need sorting. So first of all, I'm just going to grab the eraser tool, make it a little bit smaller than that, a bit bigger than that, there we go. Just take off those kind of little corner bits. You probably won't even have those, but I do. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then on the layer that has the kind of pinkish panel underneath, I'm just using the polygonal mask tool just to make it so that those two corners join up. And then I'm grabbing the paint bucket tool and making sure I've got that same color with the eyedropper. And I'm just filling that bit there. So it looks like 
on that corner. We don't need to worry about that corner down there. But we do need to worry about this corner down here. So that the other corner and this corner, once I've mastered off, both look like they are kind of the same panel, like it's a thick piece of exo skin that has been moved away from my face. Okay. Right, so that is the cheek panel, if you will, coming away from my face. Now we need to worry about what's going on underneath that. So I found this picture of some machinery on Google, and I'm just going to use the rectangle select tool to select a bit, press Control C to copy it, and then Control V to paste it into my um, project. And I'm just gonna move it so it covers over that black panel. And I'm gonna to go to that black panel layer, and I'm gonna use the magic wand to select that panel. Then I'm going to go back to my machinery layer, go select inverse, so the mask goes around that panel, and then press delete, so all I'm left with is the machinery in that shape. Okay, then I'm gonna double click and go to the layer style, and then I want the inner shadow, and I want normal selected, and then I'm gonna mess around with the distance and the size until I make it look like that machinery is underneath my skin. Okay, um, you will need to play with these to get the right effect on yours. I'm also going to go to Inner Glow um, because I want the shadow to be around that back edge a little bit as well. So I just need to make sure it's black rather than hot pink. And same as before, messing around with the size just to make it so that the kind of the darkness is around all of the edges, not just the uh, front two. Click OK when you're happy. And now you've got machinery inside your head underneath your skin. OK, right. So next up, I'm going to start putting some more cyborg features. I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to make sure there's no fill and that the stroke is black. And then I'm going to mess around with the thickness a bit. You may need to play with this again later, but just make sure it's a, a good thickness. Okay, and I'm going to draw bits onto my face, lines if you will, to make it look like my face is kind of coming apart. I'm just going to make that line a bit thicker. Okay, that looks good. Once you're happy with the thickness, I'm going to right click and rasterize that layer. OK, so that will enable me then to get the pen tool again and start drawing some more lines. OK, and you can put the lines wherever you like, but I'm making sure they kind of match up with the panel. Every time you draw a line, I would suggest rasterizing it. Um, then you don't have the issue of lines connecting. So I can draw another line now um, and I can play with the line. Obviously, I'm just moving it up at the moment just to make it sure it's in the right position. And I can draw this next line without it connecting to the last because I've already rasterized the last line. OK. Right, so same here. I'm just going to right click, rasterize. And that allows me to draw a new line. And essentially you can put these lines wherever you like. The idea is just to break up your face and make it look like you're a cyborg. OK, so think about a kind of circuit board when you do this, maybe how the lines on a circuit board work. And think about how you can make it look like your kind of bits of your line go down underneath your T-shirt and down your neck. So that you're not just confining this to your face. OK, I think that looks good. So just rasterize that last line. And now I'm happy with it. I'm going to select all of those layers. And I'm going to right click and merge those layers together. So I have all my lines on one layer. OK. And 
just going to make sure that it's below the other layers. Okay. And what I need to do now is make it look like it's kind of 3D. Okay. So I'm just moving that underneath the uh, panel layer so that it works. And I'm going to double click on that layer and I'm going to go to bevel and emboss. And I'm going to make sure I've got inner bevel and smooth selected and down as my selection. Okay. And that's going to make it look like these are kind of cut into my flesh layer, if you will. Okay. So I can click OK on that. And what I want to do next is just rasterize that. So right click, rasterize layer style. And then if I zoom in, you can see I just need to get rid of these kind of bits where it's obviously not working. So I'm just going to get the eraser tool first and just delete any bits that aren't working. And I'm going to use the smudge tool as well, just to smudge the ends of lines into the eye there. And I think I'll likely need to do, yes, where it's going over the edge of my head. So I'm just going to grab the eraser tool again, just delete that edge and up here. Just to make sure that illusion of these lines being actually on my skin is kept. Okay, that looks good. And then right down here to my ear, just going to kind of cut that off to be an angle like that. Okay, now I'm going to go down to my neck and just make sure that where those lines meet my t-shirt, the illusion isn't messed up. Just delete that bit and the other bit. And then I'm just going to get the smudge tool on those as well, just to smudge out the ends. Okay. And then you've got this little lump here that I just want to get rid of. I'm just going to do that. Okay, lovely. Right, so that is me as a cyborg pretty much done. Now I think we should add some interesting effects to it. So what I'm going to do is put some kind of colour over the image. So I'm going to use the gradient tool. I'm going to make a new layer first. There it is. Bring that down to just above my um, photo layer. I'm going to grab the gradient tool hidden below the paint bucket tool. And I'm going to make sure I've got a nice bright red. Click OK. And I'm going to make sure I've got red to nothing. So red to transparent selected. And then I'm going to drag from the bottom left corner just across myself. Don't worry that I'm not going over the uh, panel at the moment. I'm just trying to apply the effect to my photo, but what I'm going to do is right click and duplicate that layer and I'm going to bring it above the panel too. But I only want it to be on my skin, okay, and on the panel. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to clipping mask and that's just going to clip it to the panel. So only the reds on the panel, okay. And I'm going to do the same here right click, clipping mask, and that's going to clip that color just to my photo, okay. Right. While I'm still on that red layer, I'm going to go to the drop down menu and I'm going to go to darken and that's going to just put that red over my photo and I'm going to go to the other red layer and do the same. And you can see how it's blended that red into my skin so you can see all the detail behind it. OK, and I'm going to do the same kind of effect, grabbing a new layer and grabbing it down to just above the bottom red layer and my photo. And I'm going to choose black as my color this time. And I'm going to do the same thing with the gradient tool at this side over here so that I kind of give myself some shadow on the right hand side. Okay. Now this kind of thing you'll just have to work 
yourself decide how much or how little you want okay and then I'm going to do the same right click clipping mask and that's just going to clip it to my photo and I'm going to do the same again darken and I'm also going to go to the opacity and just bring the opacity down just a little bit so it's not quite so dark okay but you can play with these with your photo, decide how little or much darkness you want. Okay, now I'm gonna worry about my background. So I'm gonna to go to the black layer at the bottom and I'm going to choose a nice hot pink color. And I'm going to use the paintbrush this time, a kind of medium thickness like this. And I'm just gonna put in some lines I'm going to try and stay vertical or horizontal. And this is just going to give my background a bit of a futuristic vibe, kind of computery, futuristic, cityscape, kind of giving that feel. I'm going to go for blue now, add some blue bits. And where you put these is completely up to you. Think about how you can fill the space nicely. Less is more, so don't overdo it. Think about how it can interact with your portrait. And I'm gonna choose a different color, a nice bright red, I think. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. And just putting these things in wherever you feel they look best. Try and stay vertical or horizontal. And I think one last color, a little bit of green. Not too much of this though. Just a few bits here and there. Okay. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna go to filter blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to blur those just a bit. That's a bit too much. Yep, something like that. There it is. And that's just going to blur those, soften them up, make them look more backgroundy and more like a kind of cityscape in the background. Okay, now we're gonna work on my eye, which is gonna be the last thing, the last effect. And I'm gonna use the shape tool and get the ellipse shape. And I'm just gonna draw an ellipse shape similar to the shape of my eye or my pupil. Just going to use the arrow tool just to rotate that a little bit. Okay, and then I want to change the color of that. So it's gonna have a white fill and no stroke. So I can turn that into an X. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring that layer up right to the top because we can't see it at the minute. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to apply two effects to that. I'm gonna double click on that layer and go to outer glow. And that looks pretty good actually. I want hot pink. Um, you can decide what kind of size you want the glow to be. And I'm also gonna to go to inner glow and choose hot pink. And I'm just gonna bring that size down. And I just want to soften the edge of the inside of that shape so that it's not so such a hard shape and click OK. And that is my glowing eye done. And that is the last effect done and dusted. And I'll just show you the whole thing. And that is how to make yourself look like a cyborg using Photopia. I hope you find this tutorial helpful.